Casio has some great functionality to customise the look of your presentations as well as how your end user interacts with them. Using the Overlays tool, you can set reusable templates that can be applied to any project and capture your company branding. These templates include common items that you'd want to display on your projects, such as text and images, as well as some other useful elements too. Let's take a look. Overlays are located on the library tab of your dashboard. To create a new overlay, click the Add button and give it a name. When you then edit it, you'll be taken into the Overlay Builder. Within the Overlay Builder, we can add elements using the interface on the left-hand side. A common requirement is to display your logo on your presentation. So let's start by adding in a picture. Whenever an item is added, it appears in the center of the screen. When an item is clicked, it becomes active and several tools become available to help build the overlay. Double-clicking an item or clicking the settings button will edit the item. For pictures, this allows an image to be selected from the Assets Manager. Each item can also include interactive behaviour when clicked. In this case, let's make it so that when someone clicks the logo, it takes them to our website. Once you're happy with the settings, click Save to accept the changes. To position the image, click it to activate it, and then click and drag it into place. The on-click links can also be used to build navigation elements. Let's add in another image and edit it, and this time choose a backwards arrow. There are a number of predefined navigation assets that can be used, or you can upload your own. For more information regarding assets, check out our Asset Manager video. We can also control whether a background colour is needed, whether a hover shadow should be shown, and what happens when the image is clicked. As this is a navigation element, I'll set the on click to previous and turn the hover shadow on. By default, items are anchored relative to the top left. However, I want this to be relative to the bottom, so I'll change its anchor options. Like the logo, I can then drag it into position. However, rather than just roughly position the image, we can instead make it use the grid. The grid helps you lay out an overlay and elements automatically snap to its grid lines. The grid can be customised to display the required number of grid lines horizontally and vertically, and is only visible when editing an overlay. It won't be shown when in the viewer. As you drag items around, you'll see snap lines appear to help you position it correctly. The same is true when resizing. Great, so now I have a back button, and now I want to add another navigation image that will allow me to move forward in the project. I could just insert another image from scratch, as we've just done, or I can use the duplicate tool to make a copy of the active item. All I now need to do is swap the image out for a forward icon, change the on click to next, and then position the button into place. Because I want this to be in the bottom right, I'll also make sure the anchors are set correctly. Whilst Cadassio does save the overlay automatically at certain points, it's good practice to manually save your overlay by clicking the save icon when you've made several changes too. Text can also be added to an overlay. The text can be manually typed and meta properties can also be brought through from whichever project the overlay is being displayed on. This is really useful as information can be shown for properties such as project name, step name, step description, step number, and total number of steps. I'll add in some text that shows the step description. Once the text box is placed, double clicking into the text will open up the text settings. From here, I can format the text to match my company branding and insert meta properties. In this case, the step description. Just like with the navigation images, the text can be scaled and moved snap into the grid lines as well as other elements within the overlay. Progress bars help the viewer visualise how long the instructions are going to be by displaying either a percentage completion or the current step number and total number of steps. These can be displayed as a line, a circle or a semicircle and can be fully customised from within the progress settings dialog. To ensure our progress bar is on brand, we'll edit the settings and change the colour of the bar as well as modifying the label colour too. The step picker is a handy item to have on an overlay as it allows the end user to quickly navigate non-sequentially from one step to another. Like all other items, there are various settings to customise its look and behaviour. Toggles allow the end viewer to switch various options on and off. You can give the viewer the ability to switch the animations between steps on and off, whether they want to hear the step description read out to them, 
turn off edges when animating, which is great for performance reasons, and also control the overlay's visibility. I'm going to set Hide Show Overlay so a viewer can quickly toggle the entire overlay on and off. Because Cadasio projects can be viewed on a variety of different devices, we need to be able to control how our overlays look when viewed at different screen sizes. This is done using devices. On the top menu, there is the option to toggle between different devices. Just like when setting devices within the designer, elements can be edited and moved and changes will only apply to that specific device. When dealing with the smaller screens, it's worth knowing that you can hide elements, which can be done using the toggle visibility tool or by using the shortcut H. If you find that your text size isn't right for a specific device, then you can change your base font size, which will modify all text sizes in one simple operation. When dealing with devices, you'll no doubt need to resize items, such as this navigation image. When you've done your first one, the copy size tool is a handy way to ensure consistency between your items. Let's work through the other devices and make the required changes. As you can see, setting the devices for overlays is really quick and straightforward. Bear in mind too, that once an overlay has been created, it can be used across multiple projects, so you shouldn't have to revisit the overlay setup once completed. In order for an overlay to be displayed on a project, it must be set for that project. This can be done in two ways, from the details tab on a project settings when within the dashboard or from within the designer. When in the designer, the overlay option can be accessed from the tools flyout menu under the viewer tab on the project settings. As well as being able to control which overlay the project uses, whether that overlay is automatically visible at the start of the project can also be controlled. It's common for projects to have a bespoke landing page, therefore disabling the overlay for these steps really helps. In addition to this, you may want to hide the overlay on specific steps within a project, not just at the start. This can be controlled within a step settings within the steps manager. One final tip, if you're looking for inspiration, or you need to revert back to the default template after making changes, you can add additional templates to your library using the icon in the top right hand corner. Simply choose the template you want and then import it into your library. Great, I hope you found this video useful. Remember to subscribe to Cadasio on all your favorite social platforms for more videos, tech tips and news.